Welcome to this video lecture of the calculus of thermodynamics. Essentially, in this lecture, we shall prepare ourselves to cope up with the partial differential and Jacobian mathematics that we shall do in our thermodynamics course. So, let us first consider relationship among three variables. f of x comma y comma z equal to 0. If such is the case, we can write z is equal to z of x comma y. We have already seen that this leads to dg is equal to dou c by dou x at constant y into dx plus dou g by dou y at constant x into dy. Now, if x and y are inter functions of a and b such that x is equal to x of a comma b and y is equal to y of a comma b then we can ex express dx and dy according to the differentials as we shown above. And hence, we can write down this particular dg is equal to, we have here dou z by dou x at constant y. But rather than writing dx over there, we shall write here differential of x based on its dependence on A and B, and that would be dou x by dou A at constant B into dA plus dou x by dou B at constant A into dB. So this is our dx, and we'll write down now the next expression, which is dou z by dou y at constant x. And we essentially have here dou y by dou a at constant b into dA plus dou y by dou b at constant a into dB. All right. Now, from this, we shall take terms with dA to be common and, of course, dB to be common, which means that we are essentially taking this term and this term together and we'll take this term and this term together so that what we get is as follows. dg is equal to, we'll write down dou g by dou x at constant y into dou x by dou a at constant b is our first term plus we'll write dou z by dou y at constant x plus dou y by dou a 
at constant b and we shall combine this particular whole thing into da plus then now we shall take terms for d b common and that is again dou g by dou x at constant y this is the first common term into dou x by dou b at constant a plus we have dou g by dou y at constant x into dou y by dou b at constant a we'll put this in square bracket and we'll call this db all right now this is the expression we got for dz where z is dependent on x and y and x and y were independently dependent on a and b all right but that essentially leads to dependence on z on a b as z equal to z of a comma b all right because z depends on x and y and x and y independently depend on a and b so therefore we have z depending on a and b and therefore we can now write just dz or dz is equal to do z by do a at constant a into da i'm sorry let's do it again we can write dz is equal to do z by do a at constant b into da plus do z by do b at constant a into db now if you compare these two expressions particularly this expression let's call it 1 and let's say if you call this particular expression 2 if you compare these expressions then you will realize that the coefficient of da can be equated to each other and coefficient of db can be equated to each other so therefore we can actually write down this particular coefficient of da here this essentially is the coefficient of let's copy this this is nothing but equal to do z by do a at constant b all right similarly we can write down do z by do b at constant a which is nothing but equal to what is mentioned by this particular bracket so we'll simply kind of now take this bracket all right so we can essentially now get this do z by do z by do a at constant b and do z by do b at constant a all right now what we are essentially going to do is we are going to consider b to be a all right so let us assume a special case assume b to be equal to y all right if b is equal to y then we can write down this particular equation 3 as 
So for this special case, our equation three becomes dou z by dou a at constant y is equal to dou z by dou x at constant y into dou x by dou a of dou z by dou y at constant x and we have dou but you can see here that we have dou y by dou a at constant y all right since this particular specific term is where partial differentiation is carried out by keeping the same variable constant this must be equal to zero and therefore we can write down here dou z by dou a at constant y is equal to dou z by dou x at constant y into dou x by dou a at constant y. All right. This particular equation is known as chain rule. This particular equation is known as chain rule. And you can see that you can just go on, you can continue to write this particular chain rule. All right. So let's say if you have multiple variables, then you can actually kind of go on doing it. You can just kind of remove this particular A and you can say that, let's say this is P, but then you have dou P by dou A at constant Y. So you can just keep on continuing doing it for all the kind of variables that are present in the system. All right. So this is the chain rule. Uh, this is the first equation that is associated with dou z by dou b at constant, uh, dou z by dou a at constant b. Now let us look at uh, dou z by dou b at constant a. So let's just take this particular equation completely from here. All right, and what is we, what now we are going to do? We are going to replace B by Y as we have been doing. So let's make here Y. Then you have, let's replace all the Bs by Y. All right, and you can clearly see over here that this particular term is dou Y by dou Y which means that this term must be equal to unity. So we can actually write down now another relationship and that is dou z by dou y at constant, when a is kept constant, is equal to dou z by dou x at constant y and dou x by dou y at constant a plus dou z by dou y at constant x. All right. So this is another relationship. Now, what was our original equation? Our original equation was that f of x comma y comma z is equal to zero. This was our original equation, right? This was our original expression. So we can now derive two expressions from this. One is we'll call x to be equal to x of y comma z. And we'll say that y is equal to y of x comma z. All right. So since we have this, let us just represent this by 
in differential format and that gives us dx is equal to dou x by dou y at constant z into dy plus dou x by dou z at constant y into dou dz and we can write down similarly for dy is equal to dou y by dou x at constant z into dx plus dou y by dou z at constant x into dz. Now what we are going to do is that this particular equation that we have, let's number this particular equation as 4 and let's number this equation as 5. We shall incorporate this equation 5, dy from this particular equation 5 into dy of this particular equation 4. All right. So what we can write down then as, let us take this part of the equation. All right. And we'll take this particular whole dy from here and simply All right, so we have now replaced this dy by this expression for this dy and we'll now add to this our original expression and that is that is plus dou x by dou z at constant y into dz. All right, so this way we have now gotten a comprehensive equation. Now what we'll do is that we shall take this particular dz and this dz term common all right so that gives us dx equal to dou x by dou y at constant z dou y by dou x at constant z into dx plus we have dou x by dou y at constant z into dou y by dou z at constant x. This is multiplied by dz, but what we should do is that we'll combine these two terms over here. So this is our first term and our next term is simply going to be dou x by dou z at constant y and we take this particular whole dz thing out. All right. So this is the expression of dx that we obtain. But now it's a very interesting situation that uh, uh, what we are getting is dx is equal to something into dx and something into dz. All right. This very clearly suggests that in order to have such kind of equation right, we must have dx is equal to 1 into dx plus 0 into dz. All right. So therefore, what we shall then do is that we'll simply equate here dou x by dou y z into dou y by dou x 
is equal to 1. So this is our first expression, which we can write down in a little bit more straightforward fashion. That is do x by do y. Z is equal to 1 over do y by do x. This particular relationship is very useful relationship and this is known as a reciprocal relationship. All right, a very important relationship. Okay, so this is our first relationship. And second relationship is that what is shown over here must be equal to zero. All right, so let us write that down. So let's just take this. Okay. And we'll now simply say that this is equal to zero. All right. So we shall now write down, which simply means that do x by do y constant z, do y by do z constant x is equal to minus of do x by do z under constant y. All right, which also means that we can now use the reciprocal relationship and we can show that this is nothing but minus one divided by do z by do x at constant y. All right, which we can now write in a more straightforward way, and that is do x by do y constant z. Then we can write down do y by do z constant x. You can see over here the first term has x, y, z, second term has y, z at constant x, and the third term now has. do z by do x at constant y is equal to minus 1. All right. This particular relationship is known as cyclic relationship. So these are various relationships that we shall use very frequently in our thermodynamic analysis. All right. So this, these relationships are essentially in the partial differential form. All right. But in order to make the whole analysis even simpler, what we shall now study is something called Jacobian analysis of the same. So let us write down Jacobian transformation. Keep in mind that to begin with, it may appear to be difficult. But once you have understood it, you will realize it's really very straightforward, very simple. And it makes your life by doing thermodynamic analysis very, very easy. All right. So let us consider two variables. Two functions. F is equal to f of x comma y and g is equal to g of x comma y. All right. If such are the two functions, 
who depend on two independent functions x and y, then Jacobian of f and g with with respect to x and y is given by so the representation that we use for jacobian is this do comma f comma g by do x comma y in a condensed form we shall simply put this in rectangular bracket that is f comma g divided by x comma y it is equal to a determinant given by do f by do x at constant y do f by do y at constant x do g by do x at constant y and do g by do y at constant x and keep in mind that this is a determinant all right so if we essentially expand this particular determinant then what we get is it is nothing but equal to do f by do x at constant y into do g by do y into constant x minus do f by do y into constant x and do g by do x into constant y. So up to this particular point, it's very straightforward. All right. Now, if we represent this particular Jacobian in such a fashion that we replace y by g, all right, then what we shall get is f comma g by x comma g is simply given by you can very clearly see here that in the first term we shall write down do f by do x at constant g but the second term essentially will have do g by do g at constant x which means it will be equal to 1 the third term or in the second term the first differential of this second term is going to be do f by do g at constant x which is fine but the second term of the second second differential of the second term is do g by do x at constant g which means that this will be equal to 0 for this specific case all right so what we essentially get is only this expression here and this expression makes it the whole analysis through Jacobian very straightforward. What essentially it suggests that if you write do f by do x at constant g, this differential that we often see in our thermodynamic analysis, you can simply replace it by this particular Jacobian notation. All right. So with this, we shall now see various properties of Jacobian. And we shall accept these properties without any further proof. All right. There are ample number of mathematics books where Jacobian is covered in great details. You can uh, refer to those books and uh, get proofs for 
the properties that I am mentioning over here. So the first property is transposition. Okay, which simply means that if we are writing f comma g by x comma y, it simply means minus of f comma g divided by y comma x. All right. So if you swap the order of the two variables in this rectangular bracket then you have to apply negative sign all right which also is equal to minus of g comma f divided by x comma y all right in turn you can always write down this as g comma f divided by y comma x all right so this property is known as transposition property. The next property is called inversion. So inversion property is essentially f comma g by x comma y is equal to 1 over x comma y by F comma G. All right. So this property is known as inversion property. Then we have a chain rule associated with Jacobian. And that is F comma G by let's say Z comma W. Then we can essentially express this as f comma g divided by x comma y multiplied by x comma y divided by a comma b a comma b divided by and you can just go on all right because this is the chain rule now, if the same number, a same variable if the same variable appears again in a rectangular bracket such as f comma f, then it's equal to zero. All right, so I can write down over here is f comma f. I could have actually written here f comma f divided by x comma y. This is equal to zero. All right, so if any variable repeats itself, then it's actually is equal to zero. That specific aspect is equal to zero. So let's consider. Z is equal to Z of X comma Y. And just a while back, we saw it's nothing but DZ is equal to dou Z by dou X at constant Y into DX plus Z by dou Y at constant X into dy. If for this particular case, now we can express this dz in a Jacobian form as dz equal to. Now, please keep in mind, we are going to use this particular property over here. That dou f by dou x at constant g is equal to rectangular bracket fg divided by xg. So we'll simply express this as Jacobian z comma y divided by Jacobian rectangular bracket x comma y into dx plus 
z comma x divided by y comma x into dy. All right. Now you can see here that this is nothing but dz over here. And the denominator of both these is essentially in one case it's x comma y, in another case it's y comma x. All right. So what we can do is that we can write this particular whole thing again. But we'll make some small change. We'll make this minus. And we'll simply change this as x comma y. All right. And we'll multiply this particular whole function by x comma y. So what we'll get is we'll simply now write down this as And since we have multiplied this by x comma y, we can, what we get that looks something like this, all right? So we can write down z comma y here. All right. And hence, now we can express this as x comma y into dz, all right? Then we'll write down, you can see here in this particular bracket, it's z comma y. We'll now change it to y comma z, which will give it a minus sign, all right? So what we'll do is that we shall now use this particular, we have here z comma y, we shall call simply it as y comma z of minus, and we'll take it on the left hand side to write down plus y comma z dx, and here we have already minus sign, we'll take it again on the left hand side, and we'll write down this as plus z comma x dy, equal to zero, all right? So this is again a very important relationship that we have obtained. All right, now, again, as what we did earlier, if you write down, if, z is equal to z of x comma y such that x is equal to x of a comma b and y is equal to y of a comma b then we have already seen what is dou z by dou b at constant a so we'll go back and we'll say what is dou z by dou b at constant a so let us go back. We we'll simply use this particular all right. And we'll now write this particular whole expression in a Jacobian form, which will essentially lead to. z comma a divided by b comma a is equal to we have z comma y divided by x comma y we have x comma a by b comma a plus z comma x by 
y comma x y comma e by e comma e. All right, and in all these expressions, you will see that this b comma a in the denominator is common. So we'll simply remove that b comma a from here. We'll simply remove this b comma a from here, and we get what exactly now you are seeing on the screen. And we shall now multiply by x comma y. So what we'll have is. Z comma a into x comma y is equal to z comma y into x comma a minus z comma x into y comma a. Here we have made use of a property that x comma y by y comma x is nothing but equal to minus 1 all right now what we shall essentially do is that you can very clearly see here that you have here z so we'll now use this we'll do some small rearrangement over here minor rearrangement and then you'll see that this particular expression looks a very convenient expression all right so what we'll do now is that here you can see he, that it's z comma a in bracket multiplied by x comma y in bracket. All right. If we take both these particular terms on left hand side, then what we'll get is here we'll get minus, but here we'll get plus and we can equate this equal to zero. So since we have this term here as minus, we said essentially change the order over here and rather than writing here y z comma y right here y comma z and we'll make it plus all right and this actually then becomes a very useful relationship for us all right we can express it in more convenient form and that is x comma y into z comma a plus We'll write down z comma x into y comma a plus y comma z into x comma a and this is equal to zero. All right. So this is also a very useful relationship. All right. Now we know that we already have an expression associated with dz over here, which uh, uh, we have already mentioned. So I'm just going to kind of borrow this particular expression from here. All right. So let me just borrow this particular expression from here and write this expression back here. And I'm going to write down this expression in such a fashion that this particular derivative, I'm going to call it as M. And this particular derivative, I'm going to call it as N. All right. Then I can actually express this particular whole form as dou Z by dou B at constant A is equal to M dou x by dou b at constant a plus n into dou x dou y by dou b at constant a. All right. And when I transform this into Jacobian, I'll get z comma a by 
B comma A is equal to M into X comma A by B comma A plus N Y comma A by B comma A. All right. And I can simply multiply this equation by a rectangular bracket B comma A. We can very clearly see that now we are using actually this rectangular bracket as if it's kind of a single entity. All right. It is useful in that way. That's why we are actually doing it. We get Z comma A is equal to M into X comma A plus N into Y comma A. Now, what is benefit of having such kind of relationship? Benefit of having such kind of relationship is we can now express our various differential forms of free energy as well as internal energy in this particular fashion. Differential form of internal energy du is equal to TDS minus PDV. Keep in mind that here we are considering a single component closed system. Then we can write down dA is equal to minus SDT minus PDV. Then we have dH is equal to TDS plus VDP. And then we have dG is equal to minus SDT plus VDP. All right. For all these four expressions, now we can write down these expressions in Jacobian form. And that will essentially be U comma A is equal to T S comma A minus P V comma A. Then we have a comma small a is equal to minus s p comma small a minus p into v comma small a. Then we have h comma a is equal to t into s comma a plus v into E comma A. We have G comma A is equal to minus S T comma A plus V into E comma A. And keep in mind here that A here, this small A, can be any variable. All right. It can be a an extensive variable, it can be an intensive variable. All right. And for all those A's, these four equations are valid. All right. So you can see here that Jacobian transformation gives us significantly ease of carrying the mathematical analysis. And now what we shall do is that we shall express all the five measurable properties that we discussed in terms of Jacobian. The first of them is alpha, which is nothing but the coefficient of thermal expansion, which is nothing but alpha is equal to 1 over V dou V by dou T at constant pressure. In Jacobian form, it's nothing but 1 over V, V comma P divided by T comma P. All right. Then we have isothermal compressibility, which is kappa T is equal to minus 1 over V dou V by dou P at constant temperature, which is equal to minus 1 over V V comma T divided by P comma T. 
then we have adiabatic compressibility kappa s which is equal to 1 over v dou v by dou p at constant s is equal to 1 over v v comma s divided by p comma s all right then we have heat capacity at constant pressure, which is Cp, which is nothing but equal to T, dou S by dou T at constant pressure, which is nothing but T into S com P divided by T comma P. And we have heat capacity at constant volume that is T into dou S by dou T at constant volume is equal to T S comma V divided by T comma V. All right. And now if you use A combination, which is let's say alpha divided by kappa t, then it will give you v comma p. So this one over b one over will get cancelled. This minus in kappa t will be denominator t comma p. So we can simply write down here. So this t comma p of alpha and t comma p of kappa t will get cancelled. And what we'll essentially get is v comma p divided by v comma t. All right. So this is as far as uh, the four measurable properties are concerned. And now, finally, what we shall do is that we'll write down all the four important Maxwell relations. Of course, we know that there are many, many Maxwell relations, but the important Maxwell relations are essentially dou V by dou S at constant pressure is equal to dou T by dou P at constant entropy. This is the first Maxwell relationship. The second one is dou S by dou P at constant temperature is equal to minus of dou V by dou T at constant pressure. Dou P by dou T at constant volume is equal to dou S by dou V at constant temperature. And then we have dou T by dou V at constant entropy is equal to minus of dou P by dou S at constant volume. All right, so these are the four Maxwell relations that we have. And if we represent these equations in the form of Jacobian, then what we'll get is V comma P divided by S comma P is equal to T comma S divided by P comma S. Then we have S comma T divided by P comma T is equal to minus of V comma P divided by P comma P. I'm not going to work out all these relationship. Then you can very, but you can very clearly see over here that this SP 
is in denominator on the left hand side. PS is on the denominator on the right hand side. So we can simply change this particular order to write here S comma P and we can multiply this by minus one. We can remove then this all together. And what we get is essentially this. So if we now express it in such a fashion that first we have extensive variable followed by its conjugate intensive variable is equal to we have S comma T. Identically, you can do over here. You can get rid of this and this and this minus. And what you get is again S comma T is equal to V comma P. If you do it for this also, you will get identical that is V comma P is equal to S comma T. And same thing will be the case with this, which means that with Jacobian transformation, you get the Maxwell relationship on platter. All right. And that is one of the biggest benefits of using Jacobian transformation. All right. So you can remember all these Jacobian rules, particularly the chain rule, cyclic rule, and this particular rule, which essentially leads to direct expression of the thermodynamic potential. You will find that your mathematical analysis of thermodynamics will become very simple and straightforward. Thank you.